I still did not understand what the nefarious plan was even after it was explained to me. Wait, you did what? Because of what? Because of what? With what? What? Like, so I enjoyed reading this book, but the more I think about it, the more I realize that I can't really remember what the plot exactly was. Part of that is because I binge read this book because I enjoyed it. And then I read a plot summary of the book and reading it, it's like a surprise. It's like, oh yeah, that subplot. I forgot that happened, taking notes. And then I have these questions like, wait, how did Adam get kidnapped again? And then I'm looking through the plot summaries and no one else knows. It's just like the plot summary says, then Adam is kidnapped. <laughs> okay, I guess that detail wasn't important because I can't remember either. I just read this book. I think a lot of that is that so much of the book's time and energy is devoted to world building. There are so many little subplots here. There's introducing the Fae, there's introducing vampire politics, there's introducing this community of werewolves in Montana, there's introducing Kyle and Warren's love life, there's Mercy's undercover cop friend Tony and his love interest, like, there are a lot of different subplots here that in the end don't really have much bearing at all on the main plot. And looking back on the book, it doesn't feel rich, it feels cluttered. Like, it feels like this series has the potential for awesome world building on both a micro and a macro scale because I love and I'm super interested with all of Mercy's little band of friends. But also the macro scale of this beautiful, rich world full of paranormal creatures and the Fae who have come out and are public and all the other creatures who are pretending like they don't exist still. But in the end, all those little detours to set up the world and set up, I assume, the whole series, it just felt like it was taking time out of a plot. And then in the end, when mystery reveal, this was the bad guy's plan all along, it didn't feel genius, it felt convoluted. Like, I still did not understand what the nefarious plan was even after it was explained to me. Wait, you did what? Because of what? Because of what? With what? What? Like... And I do think that this book would be enjoyable on a reread after maybe I'd read the entire series, because if I was already devoted to all the characters, then I would have liked it more. But as is, leaving it now, I'm just like, so I might just give up on the series. The plot isn't super cohesive, I can't really parse it very much, and I don't super care about the characters. Hello? You can't just give up on the series! Yes, I can. I mean... <laughs> Have you seen the covers? I don't want to be seen reading something with such a sexy cover. It's not even that sexy on the inside. Come on, it gets better. You can just ignore the covers. I mean, the characters get better, the plot gets better, you start caring more. Fine, just tell me that this werewolf love triangle doesn't drag on for the next 20 books. I mean, Samuel is so not right for her. Shouldn't she just, like, dump him already? I mean, Adam's not that much better, but... No, 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 don't worry. Love Triangle only lasts a few books, mostly. It's fine. Oh, thank goodness. I thought we were getting into, like, a Twilight where the Love Triangle keeps on going and there's weird vampire stuff kind of situation. Well, you know, there there is kind of one of those. I mean, the, the vampire love interest does kind of happen. What? Stefan? But he's, like, dead and kind of creepy. And just, they're just friends. What? Really? Oh, come on, you just gotta read it anyway. I mean, did you know that this book has a 4.15 rating on Goodreads? What? It shouldn't be that high. I mean, this book's okay, but not, like, 4.15 okay. Yeah, but don't you know, don't you see what that means? It means people love these books. That it means that the series gets better. You just gotta keep going. Come on. Fine. So I, I, I guess I'm reading the rest of the series. I'm kind of excited to binge these, actually. <laughs> because I think... A thing that I really loved about this book is the point of view, is the narration. When I'm reading other books that are written by men and then they have a female POV character, I don't react like some people, which is to go, oh, that's not how a woman is, that's not the woman experience, because like, well, maybe it doesn't match my feminine experience, but that doesn't mean that's like not how any women experience the world, right? Like, all welcome, why not? 
But reading these books, I had the opposite reaction. But as I was reading them, I'm like, yeah, that's what being a girl is like. You go, Mercy, because she's such a good narrator. And I love that she's feminine, but that doesn't mean she's any less awesome. Like, she's out there fixing cars and being a mechanic, but then she also takes strays under her wing and, like, cares about people's feelings, but then she doesn't back down. I love that she has this never back down attitude, but it's not so much that it's annoying, right? Because there are characters that are so stubborn and so headstrong that it's annoying. And then there are other characters who are stubborn and headstrong, and all it ever gets them into is trouble. Mercy's gets her both into and out of trouble sometimes, and it's wonderful. I love that she has so much spunk, but not too much spunk that she doesn't feel like a real character anymore. And she's super capable and helpful without being a Mary Sue. She's strong, but she's still vulnerable physically and emotionally. She still gets hurt, she still gets into trouble, but then she's able to get back out of trouble by herself and with her friends. And. Most of all, I love the dynamic between Mercy, our POV character, and Jessie, the teenage daughter of one of her love interests. I want her to pick Adam just so she can be Jessie's stepmom, because their dynamic is adorable and it needs to, like, be solidified and forever. So, yeah, I'm gonna read the whole series, and then maybe afterward I'll reread book one and hopefully like it a little bit more, because I think there's so many good bones here. It's just not quite in the right shape yet. Mm -hmm.